Okay, artists, so we just finished reading about owl babies. We read this book by Martin Waddell, illustrated by Patrick Benson, and we learned about the three owl babies, Sarah, Percy, and Bill. And today, we are going to create artwork inspired by the cover of the book. So our artwork is going to look like the cover. We're going to have three owl babies. We're going to have one large, which would be Sarah, one medium, which would be Percy, and one small, which would be Bill. So the very first thing that we need to do is we need to code our paper. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the white crayon, and I want my name to be in the lower right-hand corner. Most artists, when they uh, write their name on their artwork, they write in the lower right-hand corner. So I'm gonna go ahead and write my name, and I want you to write your class code as well. If you don't want to put your class code on the front of your paper, you can go ahead and put it on the back. Remember your class code is the first initial of your teacher um, and the grade level that you are in. So it could be um, KE or KW, depending on what class you are in. It might be a different initial or um, a different grade level. So after you code your paper, the next step is we are going to take our brown paper and we are going to create texture. There are two different types of texture. There's actual texture and implied texture. Actual texture means we are actually going to feel texture. Texture is how something feels. Implied texture is when you see something that you know might feel a certain way. Like we know these owl babies are probably soft and fluffy, but if we touch this book, this book is not soft and fluffy. So this is implied texture and we're going to make actual texture. So what I want you to do is I want you to take the brown paper that I gave you and I want you to carefully tear it in half. And your tear can be kind of jagged or uneven or you can try to be kind of perfect if you want. And then I want you to pick a piece of paper that might look like a tree branch and maybe make some edits. That means add to it. Uh, I kind of like the way this one looks, but I think I need to make it a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna tear this paper and I'm gonna choose which one of these I think looks more like a tree branch. If I don't like either of these, I can also go back to my regular paper. Um, I kind of like the way that this is a little bit uneven, so I'm gonna choose this tree branch. So I'm gonna set the others away. Now, I'm gonna add texture to my paper by doing something kind of silly. I am going to carefully crumple that paper up. So I'm crumpling it up, and then I'm going to carefully, because I don't want it to rip, open it back up. And I have just added texture to my paper to make it look more like a tree branch. So if we look at our book cover, our branch comes off from the edge of the paper. So we don't want our branch just to be kind of sitting in the middle of the paper. Um, we want it to come off from an edge. So I need to decide which edge I like the best and I am going to glue that branch down on my paper. Now remember I've taught you dot, dot, not a lot. This branch might need a few more than five dots because it is kind of crumpled and has texture, but you can see that I'm still not doing too much glue, just dots of glue. And I'm going to carefully flip that branch over and I'm gonna line it up. I don't want my branch to be all the way at the top because then I won't have room to put my owl babies on. I don't want it all the way at the bottom because I don't wanna cover up my name. So I'm gonna go kind of in the middle of the paper and I can smooth that down as best as I can. If I get a little bit of glue on the paper, the black paper, it's not that big of a deal. I'm gonna try to smooth my branch out as best as I can. Once I have glued my branch onto my black paper, I am going to take a sponge. And instead of a paintbrush, this time I'm going to use a sponge, and you're going to use white temper paint. There's gonna be white temper paint at your table. And you're gonna start with the middle of your branch. So if we think about our owl's 
should the large, medium, or small owl be in the middle? I like to think of medium as in the middle. So I'm going to create my medium-sized owl, which is Percy. I'm going to put Percy in the middle of my paper. And I'm going to use a sponge to create my owl. So I'm going to dip my brush into a little bit of that temper paint. I don't need a lot. I'm going to dip it in. And I'm going to think about what my owl babies look like. My owl needs a head. And if this is my medium-sized owl, I don't want to go too close to the top. So I'm going to start here in the middle. I'm going to sponge the shape of the head. And then I'm going to continue to add that body. These owl babies are kind of oval shaped. And I'm going to add that body right to the head. I can make the head look a little bit wider than the body if I want, or they can look pretty close. But my medium sized owl is going to be brush painted right on top of my branch in the middle. And then we have Bill, who is our baby owl, so he's going to be the smallest owl. I think I'm going to put Bill on this side. So since he's smaller, I'm going to make him shorter than my medium sized owl. He's shorter than Percy. So I'm going to make a small owl baby here. He's a little bit skinnier than um, Percy because he's small. And then I have Sarah on the opposite side, and she is the oldest, so she's the largest. So she is going to be bigger than my medium-sized owl. So I can go ahead and add her. But each of my owls, when I brush them on, is going to be right on top of my brown paper. So now I have three little owl babies, small, medium, and large, and I feel like Sarah might need to be a little bit bigger if she's the, the large one. So I'm gonna make her a little bit wider. There's my three owl babies sitting on a branch. Now, this is when I need to take a break because I need to let my owl babies dry. And the next time we see each other, we will add details to our owl babies. Now that my owl babies are dry, I need to add details. And if I look at the cover of owl babies, I will see that I need to add some eyes, I need to add a beak, some tail ends, and maybe some green leaves coming out of my um, tree branch, and I can add some texture and I'm going to use oil pastels because I know that oil pastels will work on top of my already dried paint. So I have a couple of different colors of oil pastels. I have some brown, I have some black, I have some green, and I have kind of a gold color. So I think I'm going to start with my owl baby's tail ends. So if I think about the tail ends of an owl, um, the owl, they kind of have two little tail ends that come out in the front and then one in the back. So if my owl was sitting on this branch, I would probably want to show that each owl has two tail ends that are holding them onto the branch. And my large owl probably has bigger tail ends than my medium owl, which probably has bigger tail ends than my baby owl. And I can kind of thicken them up. The next thing that I want to think about is my owl beak. So if I think about the owl beak, it kind of looks like a triangle, but it's a little bit hooked. So I'm going to add a beak to each of my owls. And my beaks can be facing different directions, depending on which way I want my owl babies facing. And the last thing that I need to do is I need to give my owl babies some eyes before I start adding their feathers. Now, I want my eyes, if I think about my owl babies that I saw on the cover, my owl babies have three parts to their eye. They have the iris, which is the brown part. They have the pupil, which is the black part. And they each have a tiny little highlight, which is where the light is reflecting. That's the white part. So I want each of my owl babies to have those things on their eyes. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brown oil pastel and I know that these owls eyes are very wide open. So I'm going to draw a nice big brown circle for each of my owl babies. 
I'm going to start with that. And I know that my baby owl, Percy, I'm sorry, Bill was the baby. Bill was probably going to have smaller eyes than the rest. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my black oil pastel and I am going to draw a circle inside of my brown. And it might be kind of tricky when I get down here by my very small baby owl. Now, in order to make it look like my owls have a highlight, I need to make sure I leave some of that white paint showing for their highlight. So when I color in the pupils of my owls, I need to make sure that I leave a tiny little white dot to show a highlight. And it might be tricky when I get down to Bill, so I think I'm gonna leave his that way. And then the final step is to fill in the rest of that brown so that you have the iris of your owl baby filled in and you have created the black pupil with the white highlight. So now my owl babies have eyes and they have beaks and talons. If I look at the cover of my book, I can see that there are lines to show the feathers of my owl babies, but I don't want too many lines. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna carefully pick a few spots to add some lines to show the feathers of my owl baby. Now I don't want too many, because I still wanna see that they are these nice, white, fluffy owls. And now my owl babies are complete. The final step is I need to think about adding some texture to my tree branch, and I need to think about adding some green um, to create the leaves. So if I look at my book again, I can see that the branch has some cross hatching. So what that means is if I take and I make some lines that are diagonal, and then I go back opposite way, kind of like a tic-tac-toe, board, it looks like I have texture. I can even add some squiggly lines. So I am creating implied texture on my brown paper to make it look more like the texture of a tree. Finally, I can take some of the green oil pastel and I can add leaves. So if I think about leaves, it's almost like a football shape, but a little bit of a point at the end. So I can take and I can create some leaves coming off of my branches. And I don't want too many leaves because I don't want to add too much detail and lose my owl. So I'm just going to draw a few leaves. I don't want too many. And then I can go back in with my black oil pastel and draw the lines and the veins of my leaves. There are my owl babies sitting on the branch. Now right now, my background is kind of plain. If I want to put in a moon, I could take my white crayon, and I don't want it to come out of the corner of the paper. If I want it to look like a real moon, I should pick a spot to draw a circle, and I could color that in to look like a moon. Then I can also add some small dots in the background to make it look like I have a starry night. So the moon is out, the stars are in the sky, and my owl babies are sitting on a branch. And now I have made artwork that was inspired by the book cover to Owl Babies by Martin Waddell, illustrated by Patrick Benson.